Hey up! Welcome to RimWorld, the colony simulator that has made me rage quit far too many times. Are you kidding? How did we lose? But what if we took away the colony from the colony simulator? There is a playstyle that leans towards the nomadic. It's not exactly perfect. You still need to settle or raid a base every so often to replenish supplies, research, etc. But first, we need to set up the world. We're using the tribal start, starting far into the northern hemisphere, surrounded by enemies in summer. I chose this start to encourage us to migrate south for the winter. Since we have nobody to trade with nearby, we're incentivized to get moving quickly. I love the tribal star. I like progressing. But with the new vehicles mod, there'll be a huge flip to the difficulty when we get our first vehicle. Next, we have to set up our ID religion. We're authoritarian and supremacist for the melee and shooting specialists. And of course, nomads. Which will give us huge mood boosts for not staying in one place for too long. But we can always tweak things as we go. We will be called the Spread Eagles. I keep calling the Ritual Room, which we'll never have because we'll be on the move, the Forward Operating Base, because I envision us becoming like a mobile task force once we get vehicles. Finally, we give our ideology high spirits and change tainted apparel to don't care. And I just realised in post that I didn't set the festivals to give us a recruit if they're good. Oops. And during testing, I got the Doomsday Launcher for the Relic. And I, I like the idea that the Doomsday Launcher was what destroyed the faction and sent it back to the Stone Age. Oh, we start with two donkeys? That's perfect. As for the characters, uh, look, this intro is getting a bit too long. I spent a good amount of time randomizing with the filter mod, but the gist is that I wanted to prioritize shooting, construction, cooking, and medical. It's a bit of a weird start for nomads. You need high medical on multiple characters, because you won't have kill boxes and will be raiding a lot. But you also need construction to progress technologically from tents in a field to efficient, high-tech forward operating bases. In hindsight, I could have used more crafting and intellectual, but we'll just have to see how this pans out. So I've quickly skipped over the important pre-game setup of things like clothing, drug, and work schedules. The tribal start gives you more colonists, which is nice. We start with two donkeys and the iguana. Starting with two donkeys is huge, since they're pack animals. Next, I want to assign roles on day one to maximise their usefulness. Keegan doesn't actually do much, so making him a shooting specialist would work quite well. He can still hunt, research, and write, which is what he's good at anyway. Leader and Moral Guide don't lose jobs. Ottero becomes our Moral Guide, and Lester our Leader. Described how he will use his kindness to overcome obstacles. Okay, buddy. Very good. Next, some work orders. Chiefly, food, and the allocation of weapons. And the group is fully set up. Why should you never use a dull pencil? It's pointless. So as I briefly mentioned, it's summer, but we're far north. It's gonna get cold, too cold to live in tents. So we need to immediately think about migrating south. It's a long road. We really do need to set off now. In Brighton News, we have quite the bounty of resources to mine here, if we can without spending too long here. We don't have any miners. Look at everybody sleeping so happy. Are they happy? People waking up immediately drinking beer. In summer, when food is plentiful, we can cook meals, but if we can get a backlog of pemmican, we'll be set. Our stockpile of food is growing, but we can't cook on the road, so we need pemmican that can last us the entire journey. It's time to think about travel and trade. I don't think I can trade with the Empire to the north, but it's worth a shot, and it'll warm me up to the caravan mechanics that we're going to be dealing with. With our two donkeys, we can carry quite a lot, but for this journey, it'll just be Gaston and the donkeys. We don't have much to trade, but it's worth a shot. As it turns out, we can trade. There's a jump pack, which is very tempting, but we'd never be able to fuel it. Instead, we sell everything for a medical skill trainer, which Gaston himself uses, putting him to seven fucking teen medical. Holy shit. Oh, my God, region leading master. We celebrate with a leader speech. Look how happy everyone is. Day 5 starts with a Timberwolf punting at Aero. Gaston is our best melee character, but I can't have him at the forefront, since he's the Doctor. I can't begin to tell you how many times I've lost colonists because the Doctor was the one who got incapacitated, or just had his neck gouged open and died of oxygen starvation. Well, I think they're just dead then. Fucking hell. Thankfully this time, nobody got hurt. 
but they want a colony name now, which means we're getting too attached. So it's about time we start to leave. So to this end, I build a research bench. Okay, so in previous attempts, I never got any research done. So I was keen to get started. But regardless, it turns out you can pick up the research bench and take it with you. It does weigh a whopping 20 kilograms though. I was also keen to get some better tents. I didn't know which tents were better though. As it turns out, teepees are for hot weather and viking tents are for cold. The lean-tos are a kind of a middle ground, giving a smaller bonus to hot and cold. I thought that the comfort gave teepees better stats, so I started working towards those. Oops. Oh, we, tra we trapped a caribou. I was having trouble treating our donkey for the plague, so, you know, putting them all in a pen together sounds like a great idea. In the early morning of the seventh day, a trader arrived. There wasn't much to trade, but we were able to afford a mining skill trainer. After seeing how good the medical trainer was, I can't wait to see how good this makes our miner. A dud. We then got a blood moon, which was pretty cool. Apparently cool enough for Lester and Sparks to get together, and for them to immediately get it on and make a baby. Oh my gosh, she's immediately pregnant! This now means that both of our melee characters are too valuable to put on the front lines. Regardless, it was time to pack up. It was pretty painless compared to previous attempts. Sometimes it just takes forever to set up a caravan, as you'll see later. It's a six day march to the nearest friendly settlements, but with two donkeys, we can pretty much take everything that we have. And off they go. Making our first journey. And away they go. Oh no, there comes Laura. <laughs> Food dwindles fast on the road, and there's a mountain range to pass. Best stop to hunt. We need only stay here a few days. At the foot of the mountain range are caves. Best not let our colonists near them, lest the infestations notice us. While we're here, we finish off our first research, Neolithic technology. This doesn't give us anything, but allows us to begin medieval research. Day 11 dawns as we set up our butcher jobs. One of the reasons I wanted to stop was to prep baby food for the birth. It's a long way off, but better safe than sorry. Don't eat the baby food. Don't eat the fucking baby food. We're making good progress here, replenishing our food supplies. Of course, I wasn't fucking recording it. Ah, oh, you fucking bitch. We just killed an Arctic drac. Well, it it hunted us. You can see it here. Beat up Gaston pretty bad. It bit out his fucking eye. He's still being tended for that. Altero got beat up real bad. She was the one it was after. Sparks got a bite. But she should be fine. As a result of the dramatic day, two of our colonists got infections. This means we'll have to delay the mountain crossing. Gaston, our doctor, with now one eye, and an infection himself, tends to the wounded. On the bright side, there are muffalo here, who we can try and tame. They make for wonderful pack animals. Having a good doctor goes a long way in fighting infections. During this, Lester picks the worst time to propose to Sparks and gets rejected. They break up completely. That poor unborn child. With our longer than anticipated stay and the rain, our food and medicine is deteriorating. We will do makeshift shelter for now, but we've already lost a lot, including all of our medicine. But day 14 is our first festival opportunity. A good mood boost would be invaluable for the push across the mountains. With most of our food rotten, we work to replenish it as Sparks enters her pregnancy's second trimester and autumn begins. So we ended up with free muffalo, and let me explain. Hunting a muffalo has a 10% chance for it to retaliate, and usually that means the entire group will retaliate. Oh, it's all of them! Are you kidding? This is how the test run ended. So I'm not gonna risk that again. However, a lot of animals that have low percentages to retaliate have no risk to taming them. I'd also like to explain quests. So some quests are gonna be really good for us, for instance, monster hunting. However, if a quest like a building structure or hosting refugees comes along, we just can't do it because it will mean that we have to stay there for the duration of the quest. But eventually, after far longer than we'd have liked, it's time to leave.
less than six days. So we're going to have to stay here for six days, it seems. This new camp was looking amazing, and then... Starvation? Oh no! Minor malnutrition. A lot happened, all at once. But first we need to deal with the raider. It was only one. Oh my god. Despite sparks going down, we got away with only minor burns. But we lost the baby. The whole reason we stopped here, we were preparing for childbirth. I'd made a grievous error. In setting up the camp so meticulously, I'd forgotten the basics. I hadn't fed my people. After the long journey, I didn't replenish my food supplies immediately. Oh, and a bunch of ducks migrated in on the first day, and it took me a while to figure out why they were all dying of dehydration. Up until now, it had looked like the animals were drinking from the same water tub that the people were. However, they were going to water sources on their own, and the water sources had now frozen over. Yeah, it was that cold. I started frantically looking for the closest place that would be warm enough for us to settle for winter. But the bottom line was, it was just too far. I did planning, and I kept hoping, but there was no way we would get far enough south for winter. I had to reassign tents for those who were hypothermic, and begin rushing research for complex clothing. And somewhere in this mess, Lester had time to make Otero pregnant. What? How? You, your ba <laughs> your child was, has just died. God, this guy moves on quick. At least we had two settlements nearby that were willing to trade with us. We were in a bit of a crisis mode, so trading would be essential. We were, however, poor. What little we had, we traded for cloth and food. I forced Lester to march to the other settlement before returning home. And with a wandering trader on top of that, we had enough material to get winter clothing for everyone. We had food, we had materials, but we didn't have research. But you know what, that can wait, because Lester and Atera are getting married! So obviously the number one priority is to throw them a party. It was so good, it attracted a recruit. All jokes aside, this is what our festivals should have been. We're going to struggle to get extra recruits, so ideally we'd get them through festivals. Ironically, our new colonist, called Fur, is the first person to get hypothermia. The nights were getting incredibly cold, down to minus 18, enough to give Fur serious hypothermia. I made sure to allocate her a hot tent, but even still, we needed warmer clothing and right now, a safe warm space for her. Turning our storeroom into a room that was safe enough temperature would also spoil the food, so we needed another room that was open to the outside so that our food and medicine stayed refrigerated. But we didn't have time for research now, we needed clothing for Fur now. It's only going to get colder. We finished researching just before her clothing was made. A bit annoying, but it's whatever. A quick midnight raid woke everyone up. One of the caveats of this challenge is that whenever you settle a new area, the game seems to throw small raids at you, so we never really get any difficult raids. We will see some more intense combat later when we raid other people's bases, but for now, I take comfort in the fact that we won't face much adversity until we're ready. Day 29 is the first day of winter. I think, as we are, we would have been okay, but it would have been a struggle to keep everyone warm. They'd have to keep running inside to get warm, it'd be a bit of a nightmare. It is still going to get colder, but not by too much. Meanwhile, Lester is pulling multiple all-nighters to give everyone a good quality parka to keep them warm. We'd spent 10 days here now, and Tatera was in her pregnancy's second trimester. I don't know how long you should stay, really, and what constitutes this challenge, but Tatera being pregnant puts us in a bit of a tough spot. So we decided to send her out trading. Maybe the problem will sort itself out. Yeah. Either way, we were in a really good position. We had a ton of food, loads of materials for clothes. We'll be in a really good position when winter ends. Lester pulls his last all-nighter, making the last parka we need. Day 32 starts with another drac attack. It hunts a tarot again too. What's she doing to attract them? 
Does anyone else find it annoying that an animal attacking you gets revenge when you attack it back? Like, we're getting revenge on you. Anyway, we reach the end of essentially phase one. We're in the height of winter. It's minus 25 degrees. Our animals have no food to eat, but we have food, pack animals, medicine, and clothing. Essentially, this is really where the challenge begins. I upgraded to a 2K monitor, and it, I mean, it's been, I had my old monitor for eight years. Every little detail, there's so many pixels. Okay, so I have a terrible, terrible habit of doing big recording sessions and then taking forever to edit. But as I said, I got a new monitor, and my god, it's wonderful. I also added a couple more mods. Oh, look at this mod. Oh, this mod is beautiful. Look at this. The 2K monitor plus this map mod is just incredible. Oh my god, it's, oh, it's beautiful. I wanted to get trading. Winter is in full swing, but we were comfortable. We had a baby on the way. I wanted to get a move on, as we were getting maybe a little too comfy here. We set up a mid-term research plan. Ah, oh, they've just eaten all of our agave fruit. Are you kidding? We were doing so well, in fact. We were constantly having to expand the food storage. Look at this boy. <laughs> what are those tattoos on your eyes? We need to take anything we can to trade. Oh, let's sell our components. Okay, good luck, buddy. We even tamed some woolly stegosaurus. Thinking that I could harvest the wool from them. Turns out you can't, so we just slaughtered them. Lester had so much wood to trade that he'd run out of food halfway to town, so he had to abandon more than half of it. Meanwhile, the rest of the colony was looking for more goods to trade. On top of that, we'd mastered our food production. Lester traded all of our goods for more food. The idea was that we wanted to stockpile pemmican so we could travel. Tiger pots? Oh hell yeah. Beets. Meanwhile, mood breaks were beginning to occur, as we hadn't travelled in too long. Rebuffed. <sighs> Why? We were now preempting our problems rather than reacting to them. Fuck him up. Fuck him up. Scratch, stab, crack. Scratch, scratch. Okay. Lester finally returned from his long voyage, and we were making headway on our research. Long swords and spears. Oh, wowie. Day 37 was another festival opportunity, but this one didn't turn out great. Now, it was Fur's turn to go to the closer town to trade. This time, we didn't need anything in particular. We just wanted money, since our next destination was an empire city to the east. On day 38, we gave everyone a hot tent. It was nice to finally have the materials to do whatever we wanted. Our food stocks were so big, I was worried that if we started traveling, the food would rot in our packs. In the early hours of day 39, we had another insignificant raid. On day 40, we had a loot trader who brought some very valuable skill trainers, but we could only afford one. It was a tough choice, but we went for construction. By day 41, our stocks had gotten so big, it was getting ridiculous. The problem was, was that we were hunting faster than we could cook, so I assigned two pawns to cook and worked towards making all of our food into pemmican. And on day 42, ready or not, I started packing up. We're gonna go to Memphis. <laughs> oh. 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 Oh, these guys won't trade with us. The grass is growing back. Everything is coming back to life. This is as good as we're going to be. Yes. What do you mean the baby can't come with us? No, you have to bring the baby. No, you have to bring the baby. No, you... Oh, thank God. Polluted nearby. <laughs> Where 
where do we go? Everyone hates us. Look at the price difference. They hate us. They hate us. Everyone hates us. So, we've been on the road for nearly two weeks, but the winter temperature is still pretty cold. I guess cold up here, what the hell? Even worse, the settlements we can trade with are few and far between. Maybe it has something to do with us dumping toxic waste in exchange for medicine. Why does everyone hate us? Okay, purple iron forest. This is our destination. But anyway, as we travel, we use up our food supply and need to constantly buy more. All the while, we're bombarded by endless pointless ambushes. Another ambush. We can't exactly raid anyway yet, since we don't have good weapons or armor. But this could be exactly what we need. A legendary viking crypt. Yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Surely this will contain the equipment we need, if we can defeat its defenders. Ooh, I'm worried about this. Oh, okay. Oh, what? That was it? I was expecting something way more. Inside, we find a host of graves, as well as two crypto caskets, used to keep people alive in cryostasis. Better prepare for a fight. Oh my god, what's he wearing? Guess I'll not get in there. He doesn't have a weapon. We strip the body and equip the arm. It's both lucky and unlucky that he didn't have a weapon. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, he's got a weapon. Oh, sparks! Well, that was pretty underwhelming. We proceed to open all the sarcophagi, no doubt dooming us to an eternal curse. Return the slab. It may look like we got a lot of loot, but it's all terrible durability. Yeah, where, where is the fucking baby? <laughs> yeah, we left the baby out here. <laughs> Even trying to sell them amounted to little. Oh, that was not worth it at all. Rather than waste all of our money on food, it'd be better to settle and hunt some ourselves. Are we malnourished yet? Malnourished minor. Reveal. Things were dire enough that I had to manually allocate tasks. There's something about this place. I could never seem to get on top of things. I constantly had to manually allocate every tree, every berry bush, every wall to construct. It was infuriating. Because of the delays, Otero was no longer producing breast milk. So now, on top of everything else, we had to make baby food. All of this just makes me so excited to play an actual based colony when this is all over. So we continue to trudge along. Oh my god, this is taking so long. Progress was slowed because our constructor was too busy throwing up on a baby. God fucking damn it. I don't fucking clue what I'm doing. All right, enough. It's now or never. We need to start moving. Put the baby down. We're gonna crack open this ancient complex and pray there aren't colony ending mechanoids in there. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, chill, 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 chill. Tesseron, pikeman. Using the choke we've made, we can force them into melee. There we go. And back up. Yeah, boy, let's go! What is that? Doomsday rocket launcher! <laughs> Medicine, psychic soothe pulsar, tech print for compact weaponry. Luciferium, oh god, no. Alright, easy. Now let's see using the crypto caskets. Just like last time, one at a time. Oh! They all opened. Okay, here, new plan. Everybody run outside. Oh! Oh god, it's about two minutes to get back up here. Holy shit. Enraged? That was a bit messy, but honestly, it went pretty well. The aftermath, however. In terms of injuries, we're in no real danger, but now we have all these prisoners to worry about. So Frog, I think, is fine. Four hours. Altera never got her rage kill, so she's gonna wander around looking for enemies to kill for almost three days. 
But now, we have guns. Now we can start playing the offensive. Dragging these prisoners around is going to be a pain though, and we need the extra firepower, so recruiting them is a top priority. Luckily, they keep having breakdowns as they question their belief. Maybe because they woke up after thousands of years of crypto sleep to a bunch of tribals kicking their ass. I think I'd question my beliefs too. If you can't beat them, join them. Oh, we also had a heat wave, and the prisoners almost died a heat stroke, but that's neither here nor there. Further evidence that this place is cursed. There was a missing roof that took me days to find, slowly destroying our stockpile. We also sent fur out to trade. It's a shame none of the other colonies like us, so we could actually buy something fucking decent. God, why are they hate us? All that we really needed was armor. We'd have to make do with leather. They were fucking AKs. <laughs> oh my god, look at that, it's an M16. Finally, okay, Hawk. <laughs> yeah, having a baby was a terrible idea. While looking around the map, I finally found a good location for us. An outlander city in a relatively warm land. These cities and outlander unions have better, more expensive items to trade. And there are plenty of hostile factions to attack along the roads. There's even an empire city we can trade with along the way. That's where the best stuff is. But once again, we're running out of food. We send a quick caravan out to trade before we leave, but we've completely bankrupted a nearby tribal town. Ah, oh, you're fucking... Okay then, we need to cook a stupid amount of pemmican. The game, however, has other plans. Frog kicks the living shit out of her cellmate and then tries to break out, right as a pack of manhunting panthers attack. Okay, back to work. We've worked up to 1,100 pemmican, which sounds like a lot. Fur and Keegan get engaged, we get an info quest for one of our relics, and our last prisoner stages a kitchen breakout. This is a running theme. On day 77, we have 1,700 pemmican, so it's time to leave. We send out a caravan to trade with the tribals again. They still don't have any money, but it was worth checking. The rest of the colony head to the village with the relic information. They'll link up after. Make sure we take the baby. Uh, someone grab the baby. <laughs> Carrying the baby in the rain. They've literally arrived at the exact same time. One, two, three, four, bow, bow. We're just here to look at your cool computer, you know? Don't mind how we're taking defensive pos positions or anything. Say goodbye. What if I move you here? And then I can move everyone over here. Here we go. One by one, they come in and they fall. <laughs> Easy. Yep, we just leave. Nothing here for us. Technically, that was our first raid. And it was dead easy. I think we're ready. Quest completed. To break this guy out. I think I don't care. Okay, here we go. Everyone in. <laughs> no, 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 no. Get in. Get in. Get in. Here we go. Oh my! Yes, 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 yes. Oh, there's so many of them. It's dark and I don't like it. Come on, we got this. Holy shit. They're fleeing. caravan has run out of food. What happened to all the fucking food? Trivial for who? Hyperthermia? Hyperthermia extreme, excuse me. But it doesn't matter because we're just gonna leave. Oh no! Anyway, don't forget the baby. Oh hell yeah, 
come on. Come on, take him out, take him out. Oh, okay. Fox, rescue. Wowee. Towards the end there, I skipped some stuff. When we arrived, everyone was dying of starvation. Sparks immediately went down and had to be fed. The city we visited, our destination, only sold lavish meals, which were just too expensive. Honestly, quite a letdown. Our baby grew up and was named Bicep, a legendary name. There was also no water on this settlement, so we had to get a well and a tub down for our pawns and animals right away. Luckily, there were trees nearby. And finally, we used the skill train as we bought. 12 to 14, 3 to 16. Incredible. So, that leaves us cleaning up this mess. Gaston's armor was destroyed in the fight, but he's okay. Plus, one of the guys in the Crypto Sleep Caskets had marine armor, a huge upgrade. Okay, that leaves us with 10 days left, and I can't help but wonder, what should I do to wrap things up? I keep thinking about raiding bases. Maybe, if we found an enemy city, that could be a big end goal for us. Thank you. Oh, we also got a smoke spewer, which doesn't matter, because we're going to leave anyway. And we finally recruit our prisoner, who immediately has a mental break. We we just fucking got you. Do you want to die? At some point, we lost the kid's clothes we made, and Bicep starts losing fingers to frostbite. Lester sorts him out with some warm clothes. We hunt the little wildlife there is, and cook up some meals. While on a rampage, Koa explodes herself. The resulting fire seems to be the new hotspot for people to relax and socialise. And we finally set off to our final destination. But not before Bicep drops from freezing or bleeding, uh, I'm not sure which. Maybe both? We stop at the nearest grasslands to hunt. Kill it. Before setting off once again. It's gonna be close. It'll take us four days to reach the friendly settlement, and then maybe another one or two days to get to the enemy city. But with a forced march over two nights, we arrive ahead of schedule. We buy all their food, sell our goods, and spend literally all our money on prestige marine armor and a charge rifle, and like 300 cabbage, which I never used. It's only a one day travel to the city. But we need to sleep before we attack. Mood is mood's really high. Okay, so I've never been to one of these cities before. I didn't know what to expect. So I went on a test run and boy, am I glad I did. I had no idea about these anti-grain warheads. Well, time to try it for real. I think we need to leave. You left? Fuck you. On your feet, we are leaving!
dementia. Well, we've come to the end of our journey. 100 days of nomadic living. I certainly learned a lot along the way and developed an editing style for RimWorld as we went. There's still so much I want to do, especially with nomads and vehicles. We've fully armed and armored ourselves. 200 days is very much on the cards. We gotta go back and wipe out this city. I'd like to thank my patrons, Chaos, Harkness, Dominic and Gracia, Squatlock, and YouTube member Shush Girl, who all signed up just from seeing a community post and endured no content from me for a month. You're the real ones. Next up, I'm gonna complete the half-finished Zomboid lore video and then part two of I'm Legend. Alright, peace!